Hello and welcome to Football League World TV. We've got another fan at Takeover Show this afternoon and it's Reading FC fans' turn to come on to FLW TV. My name is Sam Rock, the Chief Editor of FootballLeagueWorld.co.uk and I'm delighted to be joined by Johnny Hunt and Jack Simpson, two loyal royals. Johnny, how are we this afternoon? Good, mate. How are you? How are you guys? All good? All good, mate. All good. Jack, how are you getting on? Good, thank you. How are you? Yeah, very, very well. Uh, we're going to first touch on uh, the expectations heading into this season. OK, so let's uh, let's rewind to last season. Uh, it was uh, it was a good campaign on the whole. A lot of Reading fans didn't expect to finish seventh place in the end. Uh, Velko Poundovic coming in for his first season in English football. The season last season started in uh, superb fashion. Uh, at the start of the campaign, but it did dwindle somewhat in the latter end and they just missed out on the playoffs, uh, the Royals finishing in seventh place. Johnny, we'll come to you first. Um, what were your expectations heading into this season for Reading? Were you expecting another playoff push? Uh, we saw the likes of Omar Richards and Elise leave in the summer, didn't we? I mean, I didn't necessarily bring too much in uh, during the summer. I mean, what were, your, what were your expectations heading into this? I think, to be honest, it was so hard to know what to expect because of all the uncertainty around transfer embargoes, players leaving. Um, who know, And with Reading, who knows what you're going to get sometimes. I think, you know, losing two young, talented players like that is huge. And then before it even kind of got going, Losing Yaki Mate, who to me is like our talisman. He is the player that's kind of kept us going the last few seasons. Um, and then Jao losing him early. But before the start, I would have said we keep building. If we got a playoff place, that would have been a bonus. If we're going in the right direction and building a team long term, and then obviously, you know, stuff that is out of our hands is in regards to the Football League and what they're doing, that was the big question mark. So, you know, it. it it's just anything a positive, a positive for the season. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we'll come to you, Jack. I mean, would you have taken a top half finish before this season had kicked off? Oh, definitely. I mean, when we go back towards the summer, you know, what Johnny was saying about about all the uncertainty, you know, surrounding, you know, we were under a transfer embargo for like most of the summer. So we had no uncertainty what place we could bring, how what wages we could offer to these players. And it was really, really um, so straight for all the fans, you know, for FIFA, well, you know, I feel for uh, feel for Panovic as well because he must have been fuming about not being able to bring certain players, you know, before pre season. You know, when we compare the squad to what we have now, you know, in pre season, we were still, you know, the squad was so small, it was ridiculous, really. We had loads of young players, young players that probably weren't ready for the first team. So, yeah, I would have taken the first half, but, um, you know, a top half finish by a long way. But being honest, I think, you know, I would have taken probably 21st with all the 21st, if I'm being honest with you, you know, with all the uncertainty, you know, you know, the last three wanted is relegation, especially, you know, what, what's going on off the pitch, you know, in terms of our wages, you know, what, what the situation is really. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it has been quite turbulent off the pitch uh, at Reading for a number of, of years now. Um, Johnny, let's just touch on uh, this season so far. Uh, mm -hmm. Currently in ninth position after a somewhat slow start. But the last three games, we've uh, Reading have definitely picked up, haven't they? Picking up some, some fantastic results, notably mm -hmm. away at Craven Cottage uh, at Fulham. I mean, what have you made to the start of the season in general for, for Reading this term? Oh, like at the start, I mean, it was it was awful, wasn't it? The first few games, let's be honest. There's no other way of describing it. Um, you know, and, and just, I think it's not, you know, it's never about the result. It's about the the effort. And when, you know, when you're seeing, you know, 4 nil away at Huddersfield and you know, player, you don't have accused players are giving up, but it, it just wasn't what you expect. And then to see the complete opposite, the last three games where I think any Reading fan honestly thought we would go to Fulham and win, you'd be like, no, no way. And, you know, maybe, maybe it's, you know, we've lost so many players, but maybe that's brought the, the other players closer together. You know, the hungry, the hungry, and the players like Laurent and and the the guys that he's brought in, like they're probably one of the best transfer windows we've had because we have a, we've had to be like the old Reading where we couldn't spend, so we've had to go out and get players together and build this kind of morale and team spirit. And you can see it on the pitch. Saturday was the same; they're playing for each other, and then you get 
young lads like Southwood come in, who's been superb. Tetek, who was unbelievable playing out of position at right back. And Panovic seems to be able to bring the best out of players. Ovi Jara is the same. I think since Elise has gone, it's kind of allowed him to blossom. Whereas it was all about Elise last season. He's now, he's going to not be the main man, but it's like allowed him to find his own place in the team. And he's taken a step forward. And obviously, Swifty has just shown what he's always had without the injuries and his yeah. class. Absolutely. So, so John Swift's got his own segment in this show. I think he's uh, <laughs> a lot of attention given his start to the season. Um, let's just touch on uh, one game in particular, that game at Craven Cottage next. So kind of, as I've kind of already alluded to, um, of the last three games, that Fulham result is definitely a standout result for Reading uh, in terms of that victory. Uh, Jack, I suppose going into that game, did you have expectations that we'd come away from Craven Cottage with three points? I mean, you only had to look at the bookmakers' odds. We were we were nine to one, ten to one in some places to pick up a result uh, in London that day. But uh, I mean, just how impressed were you from Reading and, and Ovi Ajari in particular that day? Oh yeah, it was an amazing performance, and as you rightly say, it was it is a standout result, not just for our season, but I think for the whole of the championship. You know, to go to Fulham, they've spent so much money in this summer. I think they spent over twenty million this summer on players, and yet we've hardly spent anything. And to go to Craven Cottage and perform the way we did, it's just you know, it will live long in the memory of some of the of the Reading fans, the Red, the many Reading fans that went there. Um, you know, you you know, I would never have given Reading a single chance of going to Craven Cottage and getting the three points and performing the way we did, especially when you take the previous results, you know, 4-0 against Huddersfield, you know, and then, we, you know, and then the previous result before Fulham, you know, the three all draw against QPR, we were 3-1 up and we still conceded three late, two late goals, you know, that should have been another win for Reading's point of view, you know, and then, you know, we also had Tom Holmes, who got injured in the first half, and then we had Josh Laurent, he had to go and make shift centre half. You know, he was absolutely amazing, mm. you know, doing it, doing all the hard bits. You know, Morrison was amazing. They all played for each other and they all they wanted it. They wanted it more than Fulham. You know, yes, there was a bit of luck, but you need a bit of luck in football. And I think, you know, as you've seen recently, you know, the results are slowly coming. And there's more confidence in the team, there's more resilience, and the defending slowly, slowly getting better. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, let's just briefly touch on Ajari then, Johnny, uh, in that Fulham game. Uh, two absolutely sublime goals. Uh, that second goal was was almost like prime Dennis Bergkamp, uh, the way he brought that down and slotted it into the, into the corner. I mean, just how impressed were you, uh, Ajari, in that game? And just how important do you think he is to Reading this season? Well, I think, you know, last season, and when he was, you know, He's always had the ability, but it's like, take a shot. You know, you try, you kind of go around five players constantly. It's like, now he's done that. And like this season, maybe that's the step that he's taken, you know, shoot. And he's taken that shot on. And, you know, and, and that, that finish was class. Um, he's got the talent. And, he, you know, he's, he's a standout player. And he just needs the service. And I think, you know, you look at the guys that are coming, Milovic, Swift, those players create opportunities even if we haven't got a straightforward number nine, you know, there's that, that attacking field with players that just, there's goals everywhere, literally. You know? Yeah, across the pitch, there really is uh, for Reading right now. Uh, right, let's touch on uh, a bit of a crisis we've got in terms of our centre-backs at the moment next. Uh, just a note, if any uh, Reading fans are watching this live show this afternoon, please do get in touch with us. We want to hear your opinions. We want to hear your comments on this show. Whether you're watching on Twitter, Facebook or YouTube, please do send them in. Uh, right, let's touch on the centre-back situation. As of, uh, well, Saturday, we saw no fit centre-backs uh, play against Middlesbrough at home. Uh, we saw Josh Laurent and Andy Yeardom slot in at centre-back and kept a clean sheet and performed admirably. I mean, Johnny, we'll come again to you just on this one. Um, I mean, how impressed were you with them to at centre back? Given you know that isn't their natural position, it looked like they've been playing there for years. Absolutely. I mean, you you, you couldn't see two more self-assured, calm players playing. <laughs> well, three, three, you know, and Tedex alongside them, and a guy who's only been on loan for three games, yeah, and a goalie who's only been playing for three games. You know, you that goes down to you know their their uh, communication. 
playing for each other, um, battle, you know, all the, all the things that you ask for as a fan of your team, they put in there on Saturday. Um, it was superb. It was, you know, to get a clean sheet, the first one. But, you know, we actually, you know, controlled the game. And, and you know, until the, you know, the last 15 minutes, obviously, they're going to attack. But, you know, it's the, one of the best defensive performances we've had for a long time. Hmm. Yeah. It says a lot. <laughs> yeah, 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 it certainly does. Hmm. It really was a standout display from from uh, that, that back line on Saturday. Um, let's just touch on uh, Dejan Tetek, Jack, really, really briefly. Um, we know he's he's been kind of in and out of the side. He's been getting kind of last 20 minutes of games every now and then. Uh, we saw him play at right back. Uh, you know, again, he isn't a right back. He is a central midfielder. What did you make of his display, Jack, on, on Saturday? And, and is he someone that you'd like to see more of uh, at the Royals this campaign? Yeah, just touching on Tetek, he was absolutely amazing, you know, throughout the whole game. He had so much energy. He was always tracking back, you know, for the first five or ten minutes, he was a bit unsettled, you know, trying to find his way find his way into the game. But once he got through those ten minutes, you know, he never looked back. He was always looking, always making the runs going forward, you know, making the overlaps for um, Halovic down the right-hand side. You know, his crossing was just amazing. His crossing was brilliant as well. You know, putting the balls into the box and then he, he was all... He wanted it. He wanted it. He wanted to make a statement. He wanted to say, right, I'm going to take responsibility here. I've been given a chance by my man, by the mom, by my gaffer, and I'm going to take it. And boy, did he take it. He was absolutely amazing. You know, he's only about, was he 19 or something like that? You know, he's got so... He's 21. He's got so much potential, though, you know. If he can do, if he can do that, a right back out position, and what can he do in his natural position, you know, at centre mid, defensive mid, you know, mm. this is this this game could be the making of him. It really could, you know. And I hopefully we will see more of him go, you know, going to the, you know, as the season progresses. Yeah. Absolutely. I think it will do his confidence uh, a world of good for sure, uh, Tetek. Uh, right, let's touch on uh, Reading's main man this season next. Um, a large part of Reading's early success this season has come down to John Swift. Uh, he scored seven goals already and uh, recorded five assists for the Royals uh, in what's been a really stellar, stellar start to the season. Uh, for the ex-Chelsea man. Uh, Johnny, I guess Swift is always a player. We we, we know he's got the ability. Um, I guess he's been kind of sometimes questions in questioned in terms of his consistency over the years. But it seems at the moment things are really clicking for Swifty, aren't they? And he's he, he has become arguably the first name on the team sheet right now, hasn't he? Yeah, definitely. Uh, you, 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 know, you say he's always had the ability Um you know, and he's had he's had injuries. I think his his dad passed away a few years ago as well, which affected him obviously. Um, but on his day, he is you know he is probably the best player in the championship for creating chances. Um, you know his vision, obviously his free kicks. And you know, if the old blokes like me and rise a bit of Darren Kasky, obviously a much better player. But uh, that that game changer. You know, you actually go and watch him play, and you just enjoy watching him when he's on form. And like at the minute, I think because his confidence is up, he's always looking for the ball. Whereas previously, if you know, when we weren't doing so well as a team, you might go missing. If that's the term, you know. That, but now he's there, and I think, and obviously, you know, players mature, and you know, he's he's getting older, and you know, and he's more comfortable in his own skin as a player. He's like, you know, and he's seeing, you know, the, the players around him that bring the best out of him, and also maybe, you know, as a more senior player, you know, to lead by example, that suits him as well. Yeah, absolutely. As I said, seven goals so far, five assists. He did score that hat trick as well. Um, in one of our games so far. Jack, just how important is, is keeping Swift fit this season for Reading? I mean, is he someone, you know, if you do keep fit, you know, Reading could have a chance of playoffs. Obviously, we've got a points deduction potentially looming <laughs> exactly. over the, over, uh, the Royals' head. But is he someone that, that if Reading do keep fit, they could be looking upwards rather than downwards? Oh, absolutely. I mean, this guy's, a, I mean, you know, as Johnny alluded to earlier, you know, he is one of the best players in the championship in terms of, Chances creating, passing, dribbles. You know, he's what you want from your attacking midfield in terms of creativity. Always looking to play that killer ball in, you know, taking taking players on. And, you know, you know, he's got that agility as well that I think he didn't have, you know, a couple of seasons ago. He's come on, you know, he's had his injuries, you know. He's had his injuries, but 
I think this season, this is probably the best that we've seen of John Smith. And it is absolutely vital that we do keep him. But unfortunately, as we all know, he's in this last year of his contract. So it will not surprise me if we do have the Premier League clubs do um, come sniffing in for him in January and try and take him on for a low fee. You know, then also, you know, as we, if this, you know, with Omar Richards last season, you know, as soon as January the 1st hits, you know, a, a club can abroad can come in and offer him a contract a pre-contract agreement, you know, and if that happens, then yeah, it will be devastating. You know, but it's, all, it's not just John Swift who's out of contract, there's Laurent, there's Raphael, you know, there's so many more players and it is something that the club need to get a grip on sooner rather than later, you know, preferably before January. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the contract situation with a lot of first-teamers, uh, you do feel needs to be sorted uh, for the roles uh, very soon. Uh, let's just touch on that. His contract does expire next summer. Uh, we at Football League, well, I understand there are numerous Premier League clubs keeping tabs on the player. Newcastle and Brentford among those to be monitoring uh, Swift as we speak. Uh, Johnny, say a, a bid did come in from a, from said Premier League club in January. I mean, what sort of price tag are you putting on Swift's head right now? What sort of value do you think he's worth to, to let him yeah, it's so hard, isn't it, in this day, the market these days to put a figure. As ability-wise, I mean, 20 million, but obviously that's not going to happen. You know, it'll be, I, you probably could get five I'm, I'm, if they're desperate to sell. And I know the owners don't, you know, they're reluctant to do that at times. But, you know, Swift deserves to play Premier League football. As, as a player, he's got the ability to be up there. Hopefully it's with us when we win the league this season, but... You know, if it doesn't happen, you know, he deserves it. You know, he's, he's, he's a class guy. He's a class player. Um, you know, and he's been with Reading, you know, a good amount of time now through a lot of downs and a couple of ups. Um, you know, and, and, you know, like anyone, you want to want to play in the best level. And and, and he'd play top level very easily. Yeah. But we don't want him to go. No way. <laughs> yeah, definitely not. Um, any Reading fans watching this show, we want to know how much do you think John Swift is worth? Uh, how much would you accept in January, if a Premier League club did come calling, we do want to hear your thoughts. Uh, right, let's touch on some of the new signings uh, at the Royals next. So the Royals made a late flurry of uh, free transfer signings and loan signings uh, at the back end of the summer transfer window. They were, of course, under a transfer embargo, so were very limited in what they could do. Uh, in terms of incomings. But uh, let's just break down some of the signings and, and, and your kind of thoughts on them so far, guys. Let's touch on Alan Halilovic. Uh, obviously, he's got scored uh, on Saturday. Uh, an interesting finish. I don't think he, I don't think he really meant it, but it's a goal nonetheless. Um, let's touch on him first, Johnny. What have you made of Halilovic so far? Well, again, nobody questions his ability. You know, he's, he's got the ability. I think it, he's got a point to prove, you know, like a few of the players that we've signed, he's hungry, he's got, you know, he's got a manager who believes in him, he's got players around him that will bring the best out of him. And he seems very happy playing for us. He's not there for the money, he wants to He wants to be part of the team. And he, he offers something different that we have not had. I know, you know, obviously, you know, Mate playing on that side before is a very different type of player, but his cutting in, his passing, and obviously, as you said, you know, the goal he set up for um, Ojara in Fulham, you know, that, that was special and he's one of that again one of those players you watch and you go I don't know quite what he's going to do maybe he doesn't know either but it's you know it's creative and must you know for defenders defenders must be put him on the back foot all the time yeah absolutely I mean it's uh, it's always worth noting with Palilovic you know he has played for Barcelona he has played for AC Milan in his career so he has got pedigree uh, to his game uh, Jack just just briefly on Halilovic is he someone you feel is is kind of a regular starter now for Reading he's someone that that should be playing week in week out for us Oh, absolutely. He offers, you know, as Johnny says, he offers so much going forward um, in terms of his creativity. You know, he's not, he's, he's kind of similar to John Swift in terms of his creativity. You know, he's always looking for a keen eye, you know, he's always looking to provide a killer pass or a ball that goes over the top. I mean, you know, that, you know, his first assist for, you know, his first assist for Reading, you know, when he supplied that amazing ball for Swift, you know, for his goal against QPR, that was just top class, you know. That was just amazing to watch. It really, really was, you know. And I do believe he should be a first-team star because he offers something, you know. He may go, he may be quiet for like 60, 50 or sixty minutes, but you know he's, he, you know, he's a player that, within a split second, he can go find a killer pass. He can fight that ball 
you know, for your strikers to get in, get in behind the defence. It's a good weapon. It's a good weapon for Reading. It really is. You know, a different kind of weapon. You know, you know, for many years we've been relying on too many players to provide our creativity, such as Swift and last season with Elise. But we've got somebody else now. We've got somebody else. We've got Swift. We've got Ujaria and we've got Halovic. And it's really, really good that we've got those great, those players that can provide that creativity. And it's also a nightmare for defenders because they don't know who to pick up. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we saw on, on Saturday kind of Panovic deploying this almost 4-1-4-1 formation with mm. all our kind of creative attacking midfielders playing within that four. And it does seem to be working. Uh, let's just touch on Tom Deli bashiru as well. He's a player that's featured quite heavily in the last few games for the Royals. Uh, Johnny, just how impressed have you been with him? Is he someone that, that you're kind of excited to see more of in, in the blue and white hoops? Definitely. And I think he's only going to get better the more he plays after his injury last season. You know, you see glimpses of it already and, you know, finishing and he's got in, and the pace and the strength and, you know, playing alongside, again, the players that we've got around him, if they all stay fit, you know, he's only going to improve as a player. Um, and again, a real, you know, a signing that is, is a no-brainer for us. The, you know, he's going to really help develop the team. Um, and, you know, for himself, obviously, he wants to be playing regularly. So it's a win-win for, for both. Absolutely. Uh, we saw Julie Hoylet as well arrive uh, over the summer, a player with bags of EFL experience, uh, certainly in the second tier. He, he started on the weekend in kind of a false nine uh, position. Uh, Jack, what have you made of Hoylet so far? I suppose we haven't seen him play too much, but he played uh, a large part on Saturday, picking up some really intelligent pockets of space, I thought. Uh, to, to kind of bring the other kind of attacking midfielders into play. What have you made of Hoylet so far? Yes, um, we haven't seen much of him, you know, on the pitch and what he can do. But he offers so much experience, you know, for the Reading team, for the Reading players. You know, don't forget, we've still got a very young team. And this experience is going to be very, very vital as the season goes on, especially with the amount of players that we've got injured and the amount of young players that are going to have to step in. You know, he's you know, he's been there and done it with Cardiff, you know, you know, Premier League with Blackburn, you know, he provides so much you know, he provides so much for the team. You know, in terms of seeing out games, making the key passes, you know, and communicating, communicating to the players. You know, we need you we need to do this now, we need you to do this now. You know, and this is gonna be so, so key. And you know, he's also a good he's also he's one of those good he's one of those players that you want in your dressing room, you know, how, you know, 31, 31 years old, mm. you know, you can tell players, you can provide those players, the young players, the experience that they need to develop as well. But um, it's unfortunate they got injured on Saturday because I think he did a really good job on Saturday, you know, providing experience down that line, down the front line, bringing players in such as Ajaria, Halovic and Swift. And hopefully he can be fit uh, for Wednesday. And hopefully going forward, he can be a player that, you know, maybe can come off the bench and see out the next, see out, you know, the last 10 minutes. Or he can be a starter, you know, in a really big game and help the young players develop and flourish. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and just finally, let's touch on the boys from Chelsea. We've seen Danny Drinkwater and Baba Rama arrive at the Select Car Leasing Stadium over the summer. Uh I think a left back was uh, essential business. Uh, obviously, with Omar Richards leaving and no one else to fill that void, and uh, Drinkwater obviously arrives with uh, a Premier League title under his belt and, and, and a raft of experience. Uh, Johnny, what have you made of them two so far? We saw Drinkwater play, didn't we, in that kind of uh, defensive midfield role on Saturday and uh, looked really good, didn't he? Yeah, and I think you know it's, it's going to be a gamble, isn't it, when we signed him because of you know what you hear about some of the and. Um, what's happened at Chelsea, but so far he's been absolutely outstanding. And, and you know, that's the leadership that the team has lacked, I think. Something like that, that just is constantly talking to the players, organising, you know, and that helps the defence, it helps the players in front of him. And you, you can't argue with a guy who's won the, the Premier League and has had that experience. And hopefully it's good for him as well. I think it's, it's an opportunity for him to get his career back on track. So again, it's another one of those win-win situations for the club and the player. And the Roman, as a left back, he's looked great. Um, you know, we obviously desperately need of someone. At the point, it was almost anyone <laughs> that could play left back. 
but he's come in and he and he wants to be there and he wants to be part of the team and he you know you can see that in and and he gives us that pace down the left again and very solid at the back you know fitting in with the makeshift team again again he provides that leadership for the for the other players so again you know it's early days but two two great signings so far Absolutely. Uh, Reading fans, if you're watching this, please do let us know about the new signings. Who's been your standout new signing for, for Reading? Who have you been most impressed by uh, so far? Right, uh, let's touch on Luke Southwood next. Uh, Southwood has started Reading's uh, last three games and they've all uh, been victories. Uh, the young uh, academy graduate has had to bide his time at the Royals uh, with Raphael uh, being the number one choice, but uh, he's uh, he's come into the fold and has looked really, really impressive uh, in between the sticks uh, for the Royals. Uh, Jack, uh, is uh, is it is it Luke Southwood's shirt to lose now? Definitely, definitely, definitely. Yeah, I cannot underestimate what a good goalkeeper he's been <clears throat> in the last couple of weeks. You know, he, he commands his box so so well. And, you know, I've been really, really impressed with what he brings, you know, as a goalkeeper. Um, he's always, you know, he's not afraid to come up for the ball, you know, in terms of crossing. Um, he's not, you know, he communicates really, really well with his back four as well. And also his distribution's, you know, quite good as well. You know, it's in a way, it's really, really, you know, it's a really good situation for him to be in because... He's now got the exper He's now getting the experience that he needs as a young player, but also with as we touched earlier with Raphael being out of contract, you know this is you know as you say this is his shirt to lose. You know Raphael in theory may not play for another game for Reading in the league. He may not be because you know he's done. He offers so he's you know he's so you know he's so much better as, as a goalkeeper. You know he offers so much. It's his shot stopping as well, you know, that save against Fulham right at the end. That was just top class, you know. You know, and don't forget that was his second game for uh, his second league game for Reading as well. I and mean, to provide that top class save, you know, in the last minute just shows what top keeper he is and what top keeper he can be going forward. He's only gonna get better, you know. You know, and it's just ironic, you know, because under Jose Gomez, he was told to leave. He was told to leave, he wasn't surplus to requirements. You know, he's been waiting for that opportunity for so long and he's taking it. He is, you know, he's unbelievable. Unbelievable. And it's great that we got him on a long-term deal as well in the summer. That was one of the one of the good things that the club did over the summer, getting onto a new long-term contract. You know, and he's a Reading boy. He's a Reading boy. You know, he's come through our academy. It's what the fans love. The fans love a Reading academy player doing well for the first team. You know, and we... And I've noticed that there's a great bond between Southwood and the fans, especially down in Club 1871. They love him. They absolutely love him. Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, his passion does stand out. You just have to look at the full-time whistle. Uh, he really does go for it, doesn't he, when, uh, when Reddit have picked up three points, which is, which is exactly what you want to see. Uh, as a fan, I guess one of the standout things I think with, with Southwood is his reflex saving ability. We've seen it already in the last three games, the amount of top top draw saves he's produced from kind of uh, snapshots uh, from the opposition. Uh, Johnny, what have you been impressed with uh, with Southwood uh, in particular? He's brave. I, mean, I, I used to play in goal for years. Mm. You know, he puts himself in there. You know, like on Saturday, you know, he's not afraid. Um, and he's not afraid to tell the players what to do around him. You know, and clearly it's working because we've won the last three and he's been in goal, you know, and it will only help his confidence get better and better. And and if he makes a mistake, because goalies make mistakes, give him, a, you know, he still deserves another chance. You know, Raphael's made a few and they stuck with him. So the same should apply to Luke. You know, he's, again, like you said, Jack, as a, as a local lad, all the fans love seeing local lads do well. And, you know, it's great to watch. Um, and he loves playing, doesn't he? He just, he just loves being on the pit. You know, he gives it the full works, the emotion. And it shows he cares. And that's all we want to see. It's just that passion. Absolutely. Uh, right. Uh, let's touch on uh, some of the off-pitch matters next. So despite the positive results in the last week or so for Reading, there is a looming points deduction if uh, the papers are to be believed. 
Uh, kind of the latest we're hearing is it could be a six point deduction uh, from the EFL with a suspended three point um Production placed upon the roles uh, in the future, but uh, it's, uh, it's something that I think a lot of Reading fans knew would come at some stage, given some of the reckless spending in 2017 to 2019 period in particular. Um, I think it was uh, something that was always in the back of Reading fans' mind, but it does seem to be kind of coming to fruition at the moment. Uh, Johnny, I guess I'll come to you first. What was your immediate reaction when this kind of news report came out? Was it was it a little bit concerned or almost not surprised? It's like a typical Reading <laughs> anniversary season and we try to find a way to shoot ourselves in the foot. No, but it has been coming, isn't it? We know it. it's just a case of when. Although I think, you know, with the whole transfer embargo thing, you think like they're working with the Football League and you think they're kind of, then all of a sudden they're going to get a points deduction. I don't know, you know, the timelines of these things. You're eight games, same with Derby, you're in you're eight games into a season and all of a sudden there's a, you, you know what's going on with the finances for the last two years. It's not a secret. Um and yeah, you know, it's what it is. It just, I think, again, it's another reason to bring the team together. It's like, well, we'll, you know, it bring them closer as a unit to go, well, okay, we'll get another six points and get promoted with that on top whilst being under, you know, a deduction. Um, like the, the, the bigger picture part of it is, is like the club needs to sort itself out long term. We've been through a lot as fans, you know, years and years ago with different things. Um, enough's enough. We cannot afford the club to to go under. You know, it's bigger than a win. It's bigger than the football league. Um, you know, 150 years. We want to be around for at least another hundred, maybe 200. Um, and you know, something needs to change behind the scenes. The whoever's doing calling the shots. Um, you know, it's or you know, and the rules maybe need to be looked at as well. The profit rules. Something doesn't work because clubs going under doesn't. And then you see, I think you know, the the top clubs again. And, getting away with the Super League and get a slap on the wrist. And it's just getting, the gap's getting bigger. And it's it's, it's, it's a shame. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Jack, we'll just come to you. Say Reading do get a six or nine point deduction. Would you be concerned about Reading's status in the Championship in terms of, of potentially being relegated? Or do you have enough faith in that, in that, in Panovic and, and the team to suggest that they'll have enough to avoid the drop? Um, <clears throat> I do believe that a nine point deduction would be a killer. I mean, that's nine points, you know, that's a really, you know, it's a really tall order to stay up with nine point deduction. Um, but with six points, I do believe it is manageable. So let's take it now, for example, let's take the championship table now. Let's say if the points deduction was issued now, where they've got 13 points, they're in ninth. If they get a points deduction, six points, they'll be on seven, but they'd still be two points above the relegation show zone that's not the end of the world in my opinion you know we, because you know what what, I've, what we've all seen from the last three results there's quality in the team and when you compare the squad to all the teams to, to the other teams around the bottom three such as peterborough hull blackpool they're way better they're way better they're way better than those teams so i do believe that even if we've got a six point deduction we can get ourselves out of it and potentially finish mid table or even the top half you know, there's going to be one relegation place filled in Derby. So it's just a matter of the question, who's going to take the other two relegation spots? Yeah, there we go. Uh, we will see uh, what happens uh, with the Royals uh, in terms of that points deduction. We'd expect uh, something to happen within the next month or two with that. Uh, right, let's touch on the manager next. I think it was fair to say when Reading started this season, when we hadn't picked up, we'd only picked that one result up against uh, Preston, that one win. There was starting to be calls uh, for, for Paunovic to be moved on from certain sections of the Reading fan base. Um, it's, uh, it, I mean, I guess you can't be talking about that now, given we uh, Reading have just won three games on the trot. That kind of chat has very much been parked. Um, but but Paunovic, Johnny, what have you made of him during his tenure at Reading so far? Are you happy with him as as the Royals manager? And what qualities do you think he has that, that, that you particularly like? I think, to be honest, taking on the job, knowing what was happening behind the scenes, which I'm sure he must have had some idea, maybe not the full picture, you know, that's a brave thing to do for him to come to a club in crisis and take it on. And last season, you know, I think he caught everyone off guard at the start. The, you know, we had the injuries and then kind of maybe run out of ideas as a coach and, and, and trying to do something different that could have, you know, maybe got us into a playoff. But 
that's that's you know part of the learnings. His first season in the championship. What I like about him is his passion and he's he, you know he loves the club. I think he you know he wants to be here, mm-hmm. and if that that says a lot. And with the club in crisis, and he's you know he's bringing out the best of all of our attacking players. You know, last season Jao was a different player under him at the start. This season, Swift, El Jara. Yep, defensively people were quite, you know, but uh, John O'Shea going, but I, I, I don't think it's anything to do with John O'Shea. It's about the, you know, the players on the pitch need to be the leadership. Moore and Morrison were the two there. You know, that's where you expect it from. And now we're getting it from, you know, <laughs> our sub our defenders. Um, but he's I, he's great. I, I like him. I think he, he's passionate. You, you get behind him because... He loves the game. He loves he loves football. He loves talking. You know, as a, almost as a Reading fan, and you believe in him what he's doing, and he makes mistakes. That's allowed. He's a coach that is learning his trade under the most ridiculous set of circumstances, um, and you know we're, we're still evolving as a club. And he's, he's you know the youngsters he's bringing in, um, like Aziz at the start of the season. He's he's making them championship players like that. I mean that that's that's the biggest probably achievement that he's done. You know, people last year with McIntyre, um, Elise obviously, and, and, and a few others. It's just like well, he's obviously got a way about him that players like playing for him as youngsters. And if he can keep doing that for Reading and keep bringing all our academy players through, then the future of the club's positive. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, like you say, it's no secret that his hands have been tied uh, ever since his arrival. Um, in Berkshire, but he's uh, the fact that he stay, stuck around is, is is admirable in itself, isn't it? Uh, Jack, we'll just come to you uh, swiftly then on on this one. Um, is he, is the is, is the future in good hands with Poundovic at the helm? Do you think? Um, I do believe the future um, is good under Poundovic, but um, you know, as Johnny said, he's you know he, he has made mistakes, but I think he's slowly but surely learning from those mistakes. You know, as I touched on earlier, we've been a lot better defensively. So potentially we have sorted those defensive issues out. You know, we've only conceded two, you know, two goals in the last three games or something like that. So things are moving in the right direction. Um, you know, but the other, you know, the other thing I like about him is that, you know, he's, you know, as Johnny said earlier, he's getting, you know, he's, he's getting the best out of young players. You know, St- Michael Stickland came on, you know, for the last couple of minutes against Bo, I thought it was brilliant. You know, he got the challenges in, he was getting the blocks in. And I think as long as he stays, the cat the young players are going to be so hungry because they know that under Pan as long as Panafrich is the manager, they have a chance. They have a chance of breaking into the first team. They have a chance of um, making a name for themselves. And I believe that as long as he's as long as Panafrich is around, then we could more and more young players are going to come through, um, you know, and that's really, really good for us because as Reading fans, we love young players coming through. It's great for the club as well from a financial point of view because then we're going to have sellable assets to sell on potentially. And yeah, you know, potentially the future is bright, you know. You know, I, we all we all wish that he could build his own team, you know, spending, you know, you know, give him like 10 million quid as a transfer budget, you know, get his own players and see what happens, you know, that's what we all want to ha- see and happen. Hopefully that can be a possibly in the future, but if not, then then so be it. But, you know, as we've seen in the transfer window, he's very creative at finding players that he wants. You know, you know Danny Drinkwater could be an astute signing, Daily Blashu. You know, he's really, really good at um, finding players that want to play for this team. Mm. Like young hungry players that can fit his philosophy like Dei Blasu you know and Baba Raman you know he's brilliant you know and then with Femi Aziz it's just unfortunate guy that he's they got injured you know in the second game of the season because I was I thought he was absolutely brilliant you know for the first couple of games and yeah you know as Johnny said you know he's he's bringing the young players forward and he's making them championship standard you know that's that's amazing that's amazing though you know, it's like things that, you know, you don't normally get a manager that comes in, gets young players and they make some championship players in overnight. You know, it's an outstanding achievement of what he's done so far. You know, a seventh place with five any players brought in, you know, last season, you know, just a brilliant achievement. Yeah, for sure. It's uh, he's, he's certainly done well uh, in Berkshire so far, it's fair to say. Uh, right, uh, let's wrap up this Reading Takeover show by talking about uh, the Derby game on Wednesday evening. 
Uh, Reading travel to Pride Park uh, tomorrow evening to face off against Wayne Rooney's derby. It's been dubbed by some the points deduction derby, uh, but uh, but but there we go. Um, let's uh, let's see your score predictions and how do you see this game panning out, Johnny? We'll come to you first. Uh, derby, to be fair to themselves, have had a have had a fairly good start given all of the uh, kind of uh, restrictions they've had. Um, on and off the pitch. Uh, are you expecting a tough game tomorrow evening in the East Midlands? Yeah, um, I think every game's tough, isn't it, in the Championship? You know, there's different reasons why this will be the same. Um, but their confidence is up, so they've got nothing to fear. Uh, they're playing well, creating chances, scoring goals and defending well. So, bring it on. You know, I think I'm going for a 2-1 win. I'm confident. Uh, don't quote me on that. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> you know, why not? 2-1 win there from, from Johnny. Uh, Jack, let's get your score prediction then for Derby. Uh, and, and again, how do you see the game panning out? Yeah, well, Derby have got, you know, Derby season's basically finished now. You know, I know we're in the, only in the end of September, you know, but as soon as they get that potential nine-point deduction for breaching uh, financial fair play rules, their season's done, basically. So they've got nothing to lose. They've got absolutely nothing to lose now. They can play however they want to play. They can play ugly. They can play pretty football, you know. And it, those type of games are the most dangerous in the championship because you don't know what the opposition's going to be like. You know, are they going to be up for it? Are they not going to be up for it? So, you know, it is going to be a dif t difficult game. It's not going to be an easy game, certainly. But um, Reading do have the quality, you know, as we've seen in the last couple of games, you know, much better defensively. Um, the attacking players are brilliant. So, yeah, I'm going to go for a potentially 1-0 win. On the win for Reading. So, Johnny and Jack both predicting Royals wins uh, tomorrow evening in the East Midlands. Uh, that's uh, that's good to hear if you are a Royals fan. Now, well, that wraps up this Reading FC fan takeover on FLW TV. Thanks, everyone, for watching this show. Thanks, Johnny and Jack, Thanks, for joining me this you. afternoon. Uh, really, really great to have you both involved. Uh, if you are watching this, please do subscribe to you, uh, FLW TV on YouTube, but just search FLW TV and you'll find us on YouTube. Uh, later on at four o'clock, we've got the EFL preview show, uh, looking ahead to tonight's EFL fixtures across the divisions. Uh, but uh, once again, thanks everyone for watching and we will catch up soon. <laughs>